So let's look at a specific example just to get more familiar with this. So let's say we have some other right triangle, specifically this 45, 45, 90 right triangle where we know these side lengths are the same and this is a right angle. And also if we didn't know the angles but we knew the side lengths were the same, it would also be true that the angles have to be 45 degrees. So it does work in reverse. But let's say we know this is four and that would make this four. Then based on what we just figured out, we're essentially just plugging in four for x. This would be four multiplied by the square root of two. Or if you want, you can put the square root of two in front, but typically we'll put the number in front. So more typically you might see this as x multiplied by the square root of two. But either way, if we know the side lengths, we can very quickly figure out what the hypotenuse is. But it also works in reverse, since notice that to get the hypotenuse from the side lengths, we multiply by the square root of 2. And it doesn't matter which side length we start with. And maybe I should use a dot rather than x, since I used x as our variable. So times root 2 and times root 2. But we can look at this in reverse. Let's say we have some other right triangle. Let me make another one over here. And again, this right triangle is going to be a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. So we can just mark that these are equal to each other. And let's say this is nine. So in this case, we know the hypotenuse. And before actually we look at nine, let's look at nine root two. So if this was nine times the square root of two, you can see these would have to be nine. And this is one of the simpler examples you'll see of going backwards. But the pattern is going from here backwards, going from knowing the hypotenuse to figuring out the side lengths, we divide by the square root of two. So if we wanna make this a little bit more difficult, let's just say this is nine for our hypotenuse. And to figure out the side lengths, just follow the pattern. We will divide by the square root of two. And if we do nine divided by the square root of two, we would need to rationalize this denominator. So that means we wanna keep the square roots out of the denominator. So to rationalize this, we're gonna to multiply top and bottom by the square root of two. So we get nine root two up top, and in the bottom, the square root of two times the square root of two. If we combine these into one square root, we get the square root of two times two, or the square root of four and the square root of four is just two. So we get nine halves times by the square root of two, or you can even write it as 4.5 root two. But that would give us the side lengths here. And if you forget the pattern, you can always use the Pythagorean theorem. So for instance, let me just look at one more example here. Let's say we have again some random 45, 45, 90 triangle. And let's say that we just know the hypotenuse is maybe, let's say 12, but we know these two sides are equal. So we can call this X and this X as well, and then set up the Pythagorean theorem. Let's say that X squared plus X squared is 12 squared and simplify and solve. So this would be two X squared. This would be 144. We could divide each side by two and half of 144 would be 72. And taking a square root of each side, we would have root 72, which by the way is twice 36. And I write it like this because we can actually take a square root of 36. So this is root two times root 36 or six times the square root of two, since the square root of 36 is six. So if you forget, you can always use the Pythagorean theorem. But it is helpful to notice these patterns since again, what we really did is just divide by the square root of two. And if you follow that process again of just rationalizing this denominator, you're gonna see that this does simplify to six times the square root of two because root two times root two is just two and 12 divided by two is six. So either way you wanna approach it, either using the pattern or using the Pythagorean theorem, both of those are valid and they both work.